Shabbat Shalom, everyone. I'm going to share some of the deeper responses that I had to events over the last week or week and a half. And I want to tell you the, the conflict that not only I feel from those events, but also as a rabbi, what my obligations are to bring to a community. So the combination of watching the news about the earthquake in Turkey and Syria and over 50,000, 50,000 lives lost. And what's happening politically with book bannings and control of the university and what happens on the internet. And the amount of suffering that I have been witness to amongst people who are ill has made me feel pretty low. And yet I realize that it's so important to be able to balance our lives. That is, things are really hard, things are really difficult, and yet there are very good things that are taking place, and there are things to bring joy and things for which we have to have gratitude. And in some ways, I think this represents a religious ideal. We can't be in denial about the difficult things that are happening, and at the same time, and at the same time, we can't live in that sense of pain or misery as much as there may be an inclination at certain times to do this. And so the question then is, how do we find the proper balance? So herein then, this moment on the Jewish calendar comes into play in a couple different ways. Let me tell you what they are. The first is that uh, on Sunday, we'll celebrate here with our Purim Carnival and all of our children. On Monday night, we're going to read the Megillah and we're going to have fun. And as we read the Megillah, we realize that sometimes we do have to understand the world as being upside down or turn the world upside down. We need to be able to celebrate. We need to be able to drink a l'chaim and to enjoy ourselves and kind of ignore the, the pain and just remove ourselves from it. Undoubtedly, that's what generations and generations of Jews who lived during very difficult times did on Purim. The other thing is this. This Shabbat, we're reading Parsha Titzaveh. And Titzavah has something in common with the reading of the Megillah, because both of them are sections of our learning that don't mention the name of God. How interesting is that? The juxtaposition of this Parsha, and, which has nothing to do with Purim, and Purim are both things that have nothing to do with the name of, don't bring the name of God. But what we realize in both of those things is there's a heavy presence that's felt so Titzavah begins with lighting a Ner Tamid, an eternal light that's supposed to be a reminder of God's presence and that you are to be a light unto the nations. That doesn't take place because of God, but it takes place with an awareness of God. That is by being a people who pursue peace and justice, being a people who celebrate life and affirm life. You create a sense of God in this world. And similarly in the uh, Megillah, we don't read about God, and yet we know that there, are forces that there are forces that are evil in the world, and our job is to stand up to them, to fight against them, and to create a world that has order and has meaning and will bring peace. So together we're going to work to make the world better. Together we work to make each other's lives more comfortable and safe, beautiful, and we experience joy. Shabbat Shalom.